This is Jane Eyre, carriage paid.
burn your disgusting. You did not wash your neck. Take the brush and scrub it. Scrub it. Perhaps you won't smell quite so much today, Burns. Once again, it is my duty to remind you that we are not here to pamper you. You are here because God, in his wisdom, has chosen to make you orphans and dependent on the charity of others. <coughs> if ye suffer hunger or thirst, for my sake, happy are ye. Who here is hungry? Who here is thirsty? Oh, surely one of you is hungry? Surely there is one hungry child in the school? Ah, there is one. Set forth. Let us see who it is. Of course, this is the new girl. Jane I know this child. She was sent here by her aunt, a benefactress of this school. Bring a stool so that we may all see her. Come here, girl. Children, it is my duty to warn you against this girl. Her name is Jane Eyre. Shun her. Guard yourselves against her. For I have it from her aunt who took her in that she is deceitful and refuses to submit. Look at her face. Does it not show? Fortunately, it's a play face. Otherwise, who knows? What winning ways she would employ against the world. It's our duty to punish her body, to save her soul, and make sure that in Lowood she learns her place. As usual, Burns. For your pains, you will sit in the corridor. <coughs> and you, Jane Eyre, may remove that look from your face.
Are you ill? No. It's only the cough. I've always had it. I hated him. Why is she so cruel to you? Miss Scatcherd. Oh, she dislikes me. I hate her. No, you mustn't hate Jane. I do. I hate her more than the street. Who is she? My aunt who sent me here. <gasps> of every precept and principle of this house does her hair wave. It waves naturally, Miss Brocklehurst. Come here, Jane Eyre. Continue. We are not concerned with nature here. Scissors, You'll see, Miss Temple, her <laughs> overindulgence. Please! <laughs> Away with her. It is our duty to mortify in these girls the lusts of the flesh. Take these relics of Satan and see they are burned. Air, you will stand on a stool for half an hour and meditate on the virtues of submission. No one will speak to you for the rest of the day. stand on a stool yourself.
The girl is dying rapidly. You know that, of course. Yes. I've made arrangements for her to go home. Oh, good. Yes. Those in bloom on the moors. I'll be back. We shall have long talks again, you and I, just as we used to. Long talks. Oh, Jane, I'm so tired. So tired. Stay with me and be here. When I come back, I shall be here. And I will keep you warm. I will give you strength. You shall have all mine. And we'll stay together. Just you and me. Forever. And we'll live. so glad to have come upon you like this. I wanted a word with you. I understand you applied to a Mrs. Fairfax of Thornfield for the post of governess to a little girl. Yes. The governors are pleased to give references. Thank you. But they would like you to stay on at Lowood as a teacher. This request is something of an honor, Jane. Then I'm sorry that the governor should have chosen you to make it. I have nothing but respect for them and for all that they have done at Lowood over the past few years. I have none for you, Mr. Brocklehurst. I have neither forgiven nor forgotten. I may tell them that in any case my mind is made up. I shall leave within the month. That's it. Does Mrs. Fairfax live alone? More or less. With the little girl? Aye, with her. Is Mr. Fairfax dead? Ain't no Mr. Fairfax. Miss Eyre, we've been expecting you. Will you come this way, please, ma'am? Dear. What a long journey you've had. You must be cold. Come and sit down by the fire. It is Mrs. Fairfax, isn't it? Yes, you are quite right. Won't you take off your bonnet? Oh, thank you. I'm so glad you've come. It will be very pleasant to have a companion. Thornfield is a fine old hall, but it can be very lonely. Shall I have the pleasure of meeting Miss Fairfax tonight? Miss Fairfax? My pupil. Oh, you mean Miss Valence. I've asked Sophie to bring her down just to greet you. She is not your daughter, then? 
Good heavens, no. I've no family. She's Mr. Rochester's ward. Mr. Rochester, the owner of Thornfield. I thought Thornfield belonged to you. Oh, good heavens, child, what an idea. I'm only the housekeeper. But Mr. Rochester is away most of the time, travelling, so we rarely see him. Ah, here they are. Come, Miss Adele, and greet the lady who is to teach you. This is Miss Eyre. C'est là, ma gouvernante? Mais oui, certainement. Tu es française. Mais oui. Oh, vous parlez français? Oh, oui. But I had no idea that my pupil was to be a little French girl. Ah, that is merveilleux. You speak French. Oh, madame, thank you for my governess. I hope you'll be very happy and learn a great deal. And now, Miss Eyre is tired, and I shall show her to her room. Au revoir, Miss Eyre. Very pleased to meet you. Bonne nuit, Adele. We shall meet in the morning. I think. No, sir. Though it's clever of you to suppose that just from looking at me. And the governess. Mm. You'd better get back before the dark comes. Here is Miss Eyre, sir. She has just returned. Let Miss Eyre be seated. Is it for Monsieur that you bought new pretty cadeau for me, Miss Eyre? of Cadeau. Did you expect a present, Miss Eyre? No, sir. Are you not fond of presents, then? I hardly know, sir. I've had little experience of them. You would do better to be more like Adele. She demands her presents. 
You beat about the bush. I have less confidence in my desert, sir, than she has. Generally, Miss Eyre, or in this instance? In this instance, sir. Generally, I know what to expect. You've been here uh, six weeks? Yes, sir. And you came from? Uh, Lowood, sir. A charitable institution. How long were you there? Ten years. Ten years. You must be tenacious of life. But then you have the look of another world in your face. Who are your parents? I never knew them, sir. And who recommended you here? I advertised. Mrs. Fairfax answered my advertisement. And very glad I am that I did so, sir. Miss Eyre has proved invaluable. Flattery will not bias me, Mrs. Fairfax. I shall judge for myself. She began by felling my horse. Well, <clears throat> what did you learn at Lowood? Music? Did you play? Uh, a little, sir. <laughs> of course. They all play a little. Well, go to the piano. Play something. indeed play a little. I was not wrong then in my assessment. You're very cool. An orphan child of low degree. Where do you find such coolness? Out of my head, sir. The one I see on your shoulder? Yes, sir. And has it other furniture of the same kind within? It is well stocked, I hope, sir. What are you about, Miss Eyre, to let Adele sit up so late, take her to bed? I'm not like alone, monsieur. It will be here, it will be here. Yes, you're right, neither am I. Well, talk to me, Miss Eyre. Don't just sit there. About what, sir? About what? About anything. Can't you see that I'm in a mood to talk? Tell me how you get your peace of mind. Remorse is the poison of life. Dread it if ever you are tempted to err. Right then, what could ever tempt you? Where are you going? To put Adele to bed, sir. Never mind, Adele. She is happy, as her mother was. You saw how she took possession of that box? 
So her mother took possession of me. I have been green too, Miss Eyre. <laughs> Grass green. Is Adele your child, sir? No, she is not. Although her mother presented her to me as such. No, not that green, by God, Miss Eyre, no. <laughs> not that green. No, she is the daughter of an itinerant musician with whom her mother finally ran off, clutching in her little hand the pieces of jewelry that I had uh, given her. She left the child in Paris. I brought her here a year ago when I'd heard her mother had died. The child is, of course, illegitimate. But knowing her antecedents, you will no doubt think less of your protege now. The child cannot be blamed for her mother's faults. Confound it. Have you none of your own? Well, good night. I see you also paint a little. Yes. A little more than you play. You see, I'm in a more encouraging mood today. A little more, sir. Do you never laugh? Frequently. But I do not amuse you. <laughs> By God, you amuse me, Miss Eyre. So uh, you may uh, take tea with me later. Cheer me up. It's a new role for me, sir, that of court jester. But if it cheers you up, I'm happy. Who is it? I had a 
heard a sound outside my door. And, and laughter. I came out into the passage and... Shall I fetch Mrs. Fairfax? No, no. Let her sleep. Say nothing. I want no one to know what you've heard. Was it Grace Poole, sir? Yes, I think so. Why did she remain? I can't explain. You saved my life. Dear, what an escape we had last night. Mr. Rochester was near, burned in his bed. Indeed, Mrs. Fairfax? He fell asleep, leaving the candle alight. Why, well, it's a wonder you didn't hear something or smell burning. Not a thing. But then I'm a sound sleeper. Mr. Rochester, I trust, has suffered no ill effects. Oh, no, no. He was hale this morning when he left. Left? Yes, he went after breakfast. He's gone to Mr. Ashton's place. A very brilliant party has assembled there. But, of course, Blanche Ingram, too. She's a great beauty hereabouts. And they do say that she and Mr. Rochester... Oh, excuse me, my dear. When will Mr. Rochester come back? I don't know. It is nearly three weeks. It is long in this park. Perhaps Miss Ingram will not let him go. Perhaps he is a prisoner. They say she is beautiful. Don't you wish you were beautiful, Miss Air? Flowers can be beautiful, Adele. See how delicate the petals are. The shape of the bloom, where it joins the stem. Now let's start again, shall we? And I shouldn't bother to sign it until you can do a little better. Fairfax! Fairfax, confound it, we have guests! Ah! 
we were staying for uh, a while. We ought to be able to take them with us. Yes, come right in, please. We'll go right into the drawing room. We'll do our best to refresh you. Oh, thank you. Right. Right. Come along. Please. 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 like an old but well-loved oak chest. <laughs> She's the daughter of an enigma. You think? He says she's his war. <laughs> Wouldn't you? <laughs> by her governess and uh, led away. Oh, you look a kind little thing. I think she's pretty. <laughs> no, I mean the governess. Edward, not till you keep your promise and show me your boyhood hiding place. I warn you, we shall be utterly alone. <laughs> your threats are mere promises. <laughs> oh, there you are. They're just about to come out of the dining room. I'll take Adele into the drawing room. Perhaps you'll ask Sophie to come for her. But Mr. Rochester expressly asked that you remain, my dear. Come down. Now, perhaps you better sit over here. You may greet them when they come in. I thought, Edward, you were not fond of children. Not am I. Then what induced you to take charge of such a little doll? <laughs> I picked her up in a fit of absence of mind. You should send her to school. <laughs> she has a governess. 
Oh, the little thing I've seen with her. <laughs> you should hear Mama on the subject of governesses. <laughs> My dearest Lily Zah, don't mention them. I suffered a martyrdom from them. Take my advice, Mr. Rochester. Send the little girl to school. I will consider it, Lady Ingle. And now, Signor Eduardo, furbish up your lungs as they're wanted in my royal service. <laughs> we shall sing a romantic song. Now that I dote on romance, so you must sing con spirito. <laughs> the season made for joys love is then our duty she alone who that employs well deserves her beauty let's be gay while we may beauty's a flower despised in decay youth's the season made for joys love is then our duty let us drink and sport today, ours is not tomorrow. Love with youth flies swift away, age is not but sorrow. Dance and sing, time's on the wing, life never knows the return of spring. Let us drink and sport today, ours is not tomorrow. Where are you going? To bed, sir. I'll send Sophie for Adele. Look at me. You're depressed. What about? Nothing, sir. Nothing. I'm not depressed. But you are. There are tears in your eye. You see? One has slipped from the lash and fallen. Excuse you tonight. there, so we all know what that means. <laughs> what? A joker? A fool, sir? Me, sir? No, sir. Not you, sir. <laughs> and on the other hand, that uh, could mean a journey. A honeymoon? No. <laughs> oh, the ten of diamonds. Now, that's fire. Fire everywhere. Now, that worries me. It's oh. fire in your heart, Edward. <laughs> <laughs> there is someone to see you, sir. In the morning room. At this hour? He says it's very important, sir. He's come a long way. From the West Indies. <laughs> the Joker was a journey, Edward. The ace of spades. And what does that mean? Who oh. oh, no, that life's an idiot. anyway, my dreams. Jane, what would you do if all shunned me? I should not shun you, sir. Could you dare censure for my sake? What is it? Tell me. Go. 
go to bed. Think no more of it. Go. and excitable, and he took it upon himself to finish the port, you gentlemen, so carelessly. Oh, 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 so should our consciences trouble us all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, go back to your rooms. It was nothing. Please. <laughs> well, thank you. Good night, sir. You have a sponge uh, in your room and some smelling salts. Sick of the sight of blood? I think not, sir. See that no one is in the hall.
still awake. I could not sleep until I knew you were safe. How is Mr. Mason? He will be all right. He's with the doctor. And the danger you thought you were in last night? Is that past? I can't vouch for that until Mason is out of England. Which will be soon, I hope. He did not seem a man willfully to injure you. No, but unintentionally he might. Sit down. And what of Grace Poole? Why do you keep her on here? I have no choice. But surely... Bear with me for a while. Don't press me for answers. I... I count on you more than you know. Uh, advise me, Jane. I'll put a case to you of a boy, a young man. Spoiled and indulged from youth, who commits a capital error. I don't say crime, but error. The consequences are dreadful. The only escape is exile and senseless pleasure. And then he meets a woman. A fine woman with qualities he has not met in 20 years. He has a chance of living like a human being again. Only convention stands in the way. Can he ask her to defy it? You talk of yourself, Mr. Rochester. Yes. We are each responsible to God for our actions. I, I do not think we can ask others to share the burden. Least of all, Miss Ingram. Don't you think if I married her, she would regenerate me with a vengeance? Since you ask me, sir, no, I do not. You do not like her. Come, be honest. I do not think she is for you. Oh, presumption. And who is for me, then? Have you seen someone you can recommend? You have grown attached to Thornfield. I have been happy here. Would it grieve you to leave it? Leave it? When I marry, I should not want to live here. Of course. Adele will go to school. I will find another post. I must go in, sir. I'm cold. Jane. Please, let me go. Wait. Let me go. Jane. Why do you confide in me like this? What are you and she to me? Do you think that because I am poor and plain, I have no feelings? I promise you, if God has gifted me with wealth and beauty, I should make it as hard for you to leave me now as it is for me to leave you. But he did not. If my spirit can address yours, as if both had passed through the grave and stood before him equal. Jane. Let me go, sir. I love you. I love you. Don't make me foolish. Foolish? I need you. What is Blanche to me? I know what I am to her. Money to manure her father's lands with. Marry me, Jane. Say you'll marry me. You mean it? You torture me with your doubts. Say yes. Let no man meddle with me, or I will keep her. Keep her. Fernie, you won't mind uh, leaving Thornfield for this. How should I mind if you were here? And we'll travel, too. You know, ten years ago, I flew through Europe half mad, disgust, and rage. 
Now I'll return. With an angel as my guide. <laughs> I'm not an angel. Don't expect it of me. What do you expect of me? For a while, you'll be as you are now. Then you'll turn cool and capricious and stern. And I'll have much ado to please you. But when you're well used to me, perhaps you'll like me once again. I'd like to see Mr. Rochester. He's at the church, sir. The master's getting married today. Have you the ring? Edward Fairfax Rochester, wilt thou have this woman for thy lawful wedded wife? For better or worse, for richer or for poorer, in sickness or in health, until death you do part. I will. And wilt thou, Jane Eyre, have this man for thy lawful wedded husband? For better or... Stop! I... I can't get assistance from impairment. Proceed. I can prove my allegation. An insuperable impediment exists. Go on. Mr. Rochester, I cannot go on. What is the nature of this impediment? Mr. Rochester has a wife now living. She's at Thornfield Hall. Impossible. I would know of it. I saw her there last April. She's my sister. I'm sorry, Rochester, but it is not right. Oh, my God, it is not right. It's only right to condemn a man to eternal hell. But you should see my wife, would I owe you that much? And this girl. You should see her too, Jane. I insist. Come. my wife. Such is the sole conjugal embrace I am ever to know. Well, and how are we today, Mrs. Poole? We're tolerable, thank you, sir. Snappish, but not outrageous. Oh, <laughs>
Bertha Mason Rochester. Mad through three generations, although I and my naivete was never told. Who even tried to murder me on our wedding night. Look at her, Jane. Look at her. But I loved her once as I love you now. What should I do with her? Tell me. Confine her to an asylum, to the care of strangers, where they will beat her and throw cold water on her? Have you ever been in an asylum? Well, Bertha. What shall we do tonight? Shall I play for you and sing? Will you sit with me and tell me the story of your day? Shall you hold my head on your breast whilst I sleep? Sir, come out at last. You shut yourself in your room and grieve alone. Not one word of reproach. to be my punishment. I didn't mean to wound you like this. Do you believe that? I wouldn't hurt you, not for the world. What was I to do? Confess everything? I should have lost you. I might as well have lost my life. You have lost me, Edward. And I have lost you. Say that to me. To punish me a little longer, Jane, I have been through. For the first time, I have found what I can truly love. Don't take it away from me. I must leave you. Jane, will you listen to me? I will not live as your mistress. Is that all that's important to be Mrs. Edward Rochester? Can you really believe I think that? What am I supposed to believe? You say you love me. How can you think of leaving me then? Edward, what would I be as your mistress? A hanger on, a dependent with, with no place of my own, no right to be here. All rights would be on your side, none on mine. Right, you talk like a lawyer. Everything that's mine is yours. What more can I give you? I want nothing. Nothing. Only you. And stay, Jane. When I come to you, Edward, I come to you as an equal. I will not be less. Even for the man I love. You mean to go one way in the world and let me go another? Yes. 
This is wicked. Who in the world will care what we do? I care. You have a wife still living. Living? <laughs> she still lives. In whatever states God has seen fit to visit on her, she still lives. She cannot help what she is. I will not slip past her slyly in the night to take my place in your bed. You fling me back, then. Upon the life I lived before. You need no more choose that than I. We are born to strive and endure. You will forget me before I forget you. You make a liar of me with such language. Go then, go, if that's all I've seen to you. Jane, wait. from around here, do you think, Sandra? I've never seen her. You collapsed on the moors. Who are you? Can we see? 
send for someone you know. Covered, I see. Yes, Mr. Rivers. Thanks to all of you. Her name is Jane Eyre. She's a governess. She left her last post for reasons that are personal and private, and she doesn't wish to answer any questions. She wants to find work, and she's to stay here till she does. Naturally, we said that you would help her. Naturally. My sisters seem to have everything arranged. I'll do what I can. Thank you. Well, if you'll excuse me, I have some reading to do. No, he just stood there stuttering, getting quite red in the face. Oh, promise us something. <laughs> enough miles in this parish, St. John? I'd like very much to go. I've uh, found you some work. I doubt you'll like it, though. I'll be the better judge of that when you tell me what it is. Sisters told me you wanted to go to India. You disapprove. I could serve God in many ways. I need to serve in a large way. I have to. I have to serve my Savior. I have to serve my Savior. Do you understand? I shall do it with all my power and all my strength. And who comes with me on that road must do the same. You're not married. No. Were you fleeing from an entanglement? I have been loved. Let me show you something. I've had it in mind for some time to open a school here for the village children. They have no access to education and therefore no hope of progress. 
You have a need to serve, too, I think. That's the only reason I offer it to you. The pay is poor, 30 pounds a year. But you can live with us. I accept. I wanted only to know. I'm very tired. If you'll excuse me, I think I'll go to bed. Yes, it's hard work teaching the children all day, St. John. And I think it's time we all went to bed. Very uh, well, since I'm to be in the minority. Good night, Mary. Good night. Diana. Good night. Jane, thank you for playing. Good night. Oh, kiss Jane too, St. John. Good night. Good night. is nothing but death. To go forward is fear of death and life everlasting beyond it. I will go forward. So mistrust and timorous ran down the hill and Christian went on his way. All right, children, you can bring me the book. Go home now. I can see you're enjoying yourself. Yes. Yes, I am. Surely you find it dull? The largest portion of your mind you can't use here. What will you do with all your accomplishments? Save them till they are wanted, they will keep. Have you ever thought they may be wanted now, at this minute, in some corner of the world where God's voice is not heard at all? That never occurred to you. The school is enough for me. Is it? Is it really, Jane? Have you ever looked into your heart and asked yourself if you can't do more? I did. And the moment I did, I knew that my whole life until then had been a waste, a desert. I knew at that moment that I'd been chosen. That God had an errand for me that would take me far away, carrying his light into the regions of darkness. It was as if someone had lit a lamp that I never realized was there. And what of love, St. John? Of man? Of woman. I was thinking of you. It has its place, but we must all bow to a higher love. Can we love one without the other? You place too much importance on human love. Oh, there are more ways to happiness than through the flesh. It often seems strange to me that so few discover this in the course of their lives. But clearly, clearly we are not all made of the same clay. There are some who have been given a strength far beyond their needs, 
I urge them to know that strength, what it is and why it was given. I bring an offer straight from God to take their place in the ranks of his chosen. I say, come with me. I claim you for my sovereign service. I claim you for this great work. Join me and have no fear. God will protect you, for it is his work you have undertaken. Jane, I leave for India in six weeks. Come with me. God intended you to serve as he intended me. Think what you could do there. You could run schools, help in hospitals. It would be glorious work. I'm not fit for it. I've no vocation. But you have. You don't realize it yet, but you have, as much as I. I've watched you day after day and seen it grow and develop. Don't you see? God sent you here for a purpose, to join with me in this great work. I know it must seem strange to you at first, but you'll see what impetus you'll draw from our marriage. Marriage? Marry me. Together our strength will more than double what we each have, and we'll give it all to God. This will fill an empty place for you, I know it. Work is the best balm, the best healer. Wrench your heart away and fix it on your maker. But if we don't love each other... We can learn. Jane, we'll work. We'll spend ourselves in the service of God, you and I, together in some foreign land, loving God and, who knows, finding we love each other. Isn't that the best way, isn't it? Say yes, Jane, say yes. I need you as I never needed anyone. Oh, help me, help me, Jane, help me. Give me your strength as well, for I need it. never marry you. Jane. You say you need me. The one thing I could give you means nothing to you, nothing. You ask me to marry you and speak no word of love between us. Oh Better to shut me in a tomb and let me die. For I have been loved, St. John. Loved. Oh, dear heaven, I have been loved. I must go to him. It may be too late. I must go. You're rejecting God. No. I'm finding him. And his people. And the love they have for each other. Each other, Each other. You cannot love just God alone. Terrible, Miss Eyre. She got away from Grace Poole. She climbed onto the roof and stood there shouting. Mr. Rochester tried to reach her, but she jumped. She killed herself on stones there. And Mr. Rochester? The floor gave way beneath him and he fell through. He's not dead, Miss Eyre, but... Where is he? At Ferndean with Mrs. Fairfax. Miss Eyre, a burning timber fell across his face. He's blind. Stone blind. Who 
Who is there? Mrs. Favix, is that you? Is anyone there? Yeah, boy. There's no one there. Whom did you think it was? Hmm? Is anyone there, I said? Who is it? It is I. Come to visit me. Didn't think to find me like this. <laughs> what? Cry. No need for tears. How long can you stay? Uh, an hour or two? Stay a little while. Or, or do you have some fretting husband waiting for you? No. No husband yet? It's bad, Jane. You're not pretty, you know. You, you can't be choosy. No, sir. Still, I'm surprised you've not been asked. I didn't say I'd not been asked, sir. I see. That's, that's good, Jane. You should be married. Yes, sir. I think so. And so should you. You can't be choosy, sir, any more than I. <laughs> Perhaps not. <clears throat> well, when is this wedding of yours? I'll uh, bring Adele home from school. Wedding, sir. Devil take it, didn't you say you were getting married? No, sir. Well, I'm sure some fool will find you soon enough. I hope so, sir. found me once before. I've come home, Edward. Let me stay. <laughs> 